skirt removed, our kidney removed, our leaf removed, and the tendulin removed. Now we're going to primal the animal. Um, there are a number of different ways to do that, uh, but the most traditional, kind of standard American style of uh, breaking this down, separating the ham from the loin and belly and shoulder, is by coming to this little bend in the spine. Um, we generally aim for the second disc uh, in the vertebrae here, and this is not something that seems like you should be able to do. Uh, you can cut the disc very carefully, <laughs> as not to cut into the spine, which is not a great thing to do. Um, but you can cut through the disc and then finish the cut from the table uh, all the way down from the belly and the loin. Um, we will often uh, cut this little flap away here. It kind of doesn't belong here. You can see the belly wraps. This is the belly, right? And the belly wraps back here to the loin. This guy kind of wants to belong with the belly. So and this isn't a necessary thing, but we just feel like it wants to be with its, with its counterparts. So it will separate it right along that facial line, just like that. And then we make the cut here to separate this uh, loin and belly and shoulder from the ham, we have something to work with. We'll come down to the table, all the way down. And then, pretty much in line with our cut up here. And then I'll lift this out of the way, make sure I'm lined up and my cuts look okay. This will be the time. Uh, that'd be great, thank you. Pretty good. And then we can actually just fold this guy over. And that's all there is to it. Because I was able to separate it at the disc. Okay. I trim off some of the bloody stuff. We now have a ham. A ham with some sirloin. That's ham. Well, that's just... Um, and now, oh, now you get to look at your eye of loin, which is one of my favorite parts in this whole process because you don't really know uh, how your loin looks. Especially with heritage breed mutts, like these were. I raise heritage breed mutts, so uh, I love them for lots of different reasons. But the one, the one reason that it's a risk is that they are not predictable. They are not a predictable uh, genetic uh, line at all. So sometimes I'll raise pigs, <coughs> they're the same same litter, and I'll have two inches of back fat in this tiny little loin, and that's not ideal, right? And then other times I'll have one inch of back fat and a real nice big eye, and that is why pink pigs are pink pigs, because they are a predictable um, uh, feed converting machine. They can just take feed and turn it into muscle without the fat. Um, we love fat as heritage breed pig raisers, um, but we still love a really nice loin. That is a beautiful loin. Um, next thing we're going to do is separate our front shoulder from the loin and the belly. Now there are a number of different ways to do that. Um, the one that we land on most often is uh, finding the end of the sternum. And the end of this sternum is a little deceptive because me thinks that there's a little bit more cartilage on that half than this half. But right here is typically where the end of the sternum would be. You can kind of see how it got clipped there with the saw. That's perfectly fine. Um, anyway, we would come to the end of the sternum and then we would find that rib space and follow it all the way up through. So that's, that's pretty much the rib space I'm going to follow. I'm going to do my best to line my cut up with the, with the disc here in the vertebrae. And then there will be feather bones up here, right? Cutting the, cutting the uh, pig all the way in half, um, dead center, staying on the feather bones is a real challenge. We were there for some of it. It's, it none of the cuts are bad, but what happened here is most of the feather bone is inside my loin. In fact, I can't see any of it. You see, I can see it there. Right here, right where I happen to want to be, I can't see it, which means my entire feather bone, or spinal process, is up here in the meat. So I have to work around that, knowing that that's going to be uh, a consideration, um, which is no big deal. 
space all the way to the table. And then there's going to be some cartilage down here. Sometimes, depending on the pig, you can cut through it with your knife. This pig, I think, is going to get the saw. It's not common, by the way. You can usually just cut right through it. I can tell looking at it, that's a pretty good piece of cartilage. That's all there was to that. You. Alright, now, as I mentioned, as I mentioned, the feather bone situation is a tricky one. But if you know it's there, you can kind of prevent yourself from being confounded. And there it is. So you're just by exposing it. I get a better sense of where my cut needs to be, right? So that's all bone right there. And I'm going to come up on this side of the bone and hope that I made the right decision. Hmm. And in truth, I, I will probably still go ahead and saw through that, just because I can. <laughs> and it makes a nice clean cut. And it's not that much sawing. people have wondered, where is the belly? Yeah, where is the bacon? <laughs> and you can see it right there, right? <laughs> that is kind of true. Um, what a beautiful his, shot, too. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Historically, the bacon is the belly right here. But there is yes. some left over in the front, just like there was some left over back here. So that can be trimmed up. It does taper real quickly up here. Um, but that's a real nice looking belly. Um, so, the next thing we do, uh, we've got a shoulder, we've got a ham, and we've got a loin and a belly. So the, the next thing to make this a, a, a proper um, primal is to cut this guy in half. Now, uh, there are a number of ways to do that. A lot of them determine what your outcome is. So, typically, uh, in the way that we kind of encourage people to go, because it makes the most sense for a few different reasons, like later on down the road. But we know that we're gonna want our loin to be separated from our belly, but most people, while they love loin, they also love bacon. So we will look at the, we'll look at the loin on both sides, trim, and we'll make a notch, like right here, right? And that gives me enough space when I go to cut, I'm probably not gonna hit my loin with it, right? And then I do the same thing over here. I see my loin. I don't want a notch right there. That's just too risky. I give myself about half to three quarters of an inch right there. Then, I want to connect these two knots, right? I have ribs here. I'm not going to be able to cut those ribs. One way, if you want to go this route, you can actually do this. Go all the way to the table, coming up between each rib, going back down, and then you end up with a bunch of punctures, and you flip it over, and you connect the dots, you know, with the knife and cut through the skin and the fat you still have the ribs to cut through. So I feel like if you're gonna cut through the ribs with a saw, just make yourself, make, make life easier. I do wanna cut along this line, so I'm just gonna draw an imaginary line as a score mark. My ribs stop right here, so I can go to the table with this after the ribs. <coughs> bacon. But I see, yeah, look at that. But I still have these ribs to go through. So I'm going to get the saw again, please. Thank you. And I'm going to connect, you know, from this point to this point. This is a less than glamorous uh, cutting job, by the way. It's really hard to do this and look sexy. But 
because she's not try. Yeah, I still, I still try. I still try. <laughs> So that's all of our challenge when we're doing this later. Let's do it, but it looks yeah. sexy. <laughs> On camera. Yeah. So <laughs> amazed how quiet you guys are being. Is that because of the camera? Is that what the video is? Is it hard out yesterday? Oh. I don't know. Is that the camera? Yeah. Is that part of it yesterday? Yeah, I'm just going to see. Ah. I'm thinking of myself. Yeah. He's not going to cut through all of them. No, I'm really close. I have one or two left. Yeah. That right there is a nice trick. Yeah, so what I was able to do by doing that, I didn't cut through any of the belly meat, which I really don't want to do. There's just the tiniest bit of bone. Right where? Okay. Now that my ribs are cut, I can take my knife all the way through the skin. If I air on one side, I don't know if you can see, my, my blade is just going this direction instead of this direction. Again, because of the loin. Right, it would be a tragic thing indeed to separate this and find out that I just cut the loin in half. As long as you don't cut the bacon in half. <laughs> right, well, that's kind of the compromise, right? Because at, at every stage of this, you're sacrificing one thing for another yep. at every stage. So, for example, I now have my spare ribs because they're what's left over after I make this separation. And then I have my baby back ribs, right? My, if I wanted baby back ribs, that would be at the expense of having bone-in chops, right? When I take my ribs off, if I have really meaty ribs, that's at the expense of my bacon. Yeah. <laughs> like, Every single step of the, of the way, you have to make a decision. Like, what's the most important thing? What do we love the most? You know, what is the hardest for us to get our hands on? You know, whatever it might be. So, uh, once you get familiar, though, with the animal and how to cut it up, there isn't really, there's never a wrong way. You know, that's the best part. Now we have our shoulder, our loin, our belly, and our ham. Um, all of this receives further processing, depending on what you're going to do with it. Um, so, how do we want to do that, Andy? We can go ahead and I can show you how to separate what's called the uh, Boston butt, uh, which is the front shoulder from the picnic ham, and the trotter which is and the hock. lower part of the shoulder. We have the hock here and the trotter. We've got our spare ribs that still need to be removed from the belly. Um, we have a sirloin, uh, which is, again, usually uh, more valued on a beef because it's larger. This tapers real quick, so there's not a ton of meat back in there. Um, we have what will become probably prosciutto with this leg. Um, and to do that, uh, that'll require a whole different demo. Uh, but for the, our immediate purposes, uh, I'll start by removing the spare ribs from the belly, because we know that's going to happen, right? Regardless of the direction the rest of this thing goes, we know that we don't want bones in our bacon 